Welcome back to Courtside Sessions, the only podcast designed for junior players, parents, and coaches. Today is a special episode. I'm Diadem Kev, and this is the season one finale. And we're joined with one of Diadem Sports' top touring players, Sasha Vickery. And she's going to be able to tell us all about uh, her life, what uh, she's into right now, and give us a little recap of her U.S. Open experience. So without further ado, let's get into it. What's up, Team Diadem? This is your sponsorship manager, Kevin McLaughlin. And I don't know if you've heard, but it's Nova November. That's right. Our Nova rackets are 30% off on the website, and every order gets a free can of balls and pack of string. And today we're joined with one of the top Nova users in the entire universe, Sasha Vickery. Sasha, how are you feeling today? I'm doing good, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. I'm really glad that we were able to grab you when you stopped by to get your rackets tuned up today. Yeah. Um, let's start with that. Let's talk a little bit about your Nova racket okay. and your flash strings that you use. What okay. do you like about them? Yeah, um, so the racket I've loved from day one. Um, it only took me three or four days to kind of transition, um, which was fairly quick. And um, also the string, the flash, I'm really comfortable with. I've uh, been using it for months, and yeah, I'm just happy with both products all around. Yeah, it's been really cool to see uh, a diadem player mm -hmm. on the, some of the largest stages in the country, in the world, yeah. uh, and you made a big run at the U.S. Open. What did yeah. that feel like? Yeah, no, that was awesome, um, and also seeing, you know, the whole team, how excited everybody was, you know, I'd get all the Instagram, you know, videos and stuff like that, and yeah, I think it's just great, and also being able to represent diadem on such a big stage. Like you said, it's just it's just really important, and I hope to keep growing with the brand, and, you know, I just love the team that I'm working with. I love that. And then while you were up at the U.S. Open, you had to fight your way all the way through qualies, won three matches there. What was your mindset going into, into that? Yeah, um, so obviously, you know, just a lot of hard work, and U.S. Open for any American player is obviously the biggest tournament that we could play in. And, um, yeah, just the support that I had from the crowd that week, and I was able to play – uh, my best tennis and you know I just had a great couple of matches that I strung together so it was just a really special week for me yeah I know it was really cool for me to watch in that uh, second round match that you had went three sets and I could <laughs> tell that the whole crowd was cheering for you how, yeah. did, how did that feel yeah I mean if you ask any tennis player they'll tell you the energy in New York at U.S. Open is something that literally can't be described um you know, the fans literally push you and get you through matches, and that was the case. Like, every single match I had, so many people, you know, they were chanting my name, like, uh, screaming my name, rooting for me. So it, it was just, like, an awesome experience, honestly. That's so cool. And yeah. I know an another thing that people um, wonder about sometimes is, like, what is your relationship like with the other players? When you're out th at these tournaments, do you and the other American players uh, get together, hang out, anything like that? Yeah, I think um, – it kind of to an extent. So, I mean, we're all pretty friendly on the tour, but of course, you know, it's a competitive sport that at the end of the day, I would say, um, I think the Americans, they're pretty tight knit, you know, we all get along, but, um, also with tennis being an individual sport, we're also used to doing our own thing. And, you know, so I would just say we're pretty friendly, but it's not something where like everybody's super close, but we're just, mm. it was kind of like, okay, coworker type thing. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I feel that. Yeah. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Um, and then uh, another thing that uh, I thought was really cool is when you got to warm up, um, they interviewed you. And uh, one of the big topics you guys talked about was mental health. And yeah. I know that that's been really important for you over the years. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about what, what that has played a role in your career so far. Yeah, um, that was also so cool doing that ESPN um, kind of short <laughs> interview with uh, Chris Severed and uh, I think it was Pam Shriver. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I think for me, the mental health part of it has just been such a big part of my career. You know, I'm somebody that I've struggled with anxiety for probably over 10 years, I would say. And, um, you know, dealing with that, playing a professional sport is probably the hardest thing I could ever do in my entire life. Um, but yeah, it's nice to see now, like people open up more about it. Like people are talking about it and it's not kind of like a taboo, weird, touchy sort of topic. You know, it's, it's just out there and everybody's talking about it now, which I think is really good. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's especially cool that you had an opportunity mm -hmm. to use that platform and talk about that kind of stuff. Do you yeah. have any, um, advice or tips for younger players or anyone out there that, mm -hmm. uh, struggles with anxiety or mm -hmm. any other, uh, you know, mental health stuff? Mm -hmm. I just talked to someone. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just so easy just to internalize everything that's going on, which I did for a really long time. Uh, but I think you get to a point where um, your body and your mind literally shut down for you. So it's like if you don't take the time to, 
you know, deal with these things, talk to somebody, you'll literally shut down, which is what happened to me. And I was kind of forced into having to talk about it. So I think, yeah, my advice would just be before it gets to that point, just, you know, as hard as it might be to literally just find anyone to talk to. It doesn't have to be a therapist. It could be like a friend, a family member. Um, but the only way I got better was actually saying something about it. So I think that's awesome piece yeah. right there. You know, you can't, you can't <laughs> fix anything without, yeah. uh, attacking the problems head right. on, right? Yeah, that's um, true. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about where you're at right now. We're mm. kind of in, in November of 2023. Uh, what's your, your close out to the year looking like? Yeah, so um, uh, obviously it's getting toward the end of the season now, so it's, it's slowing down a little bit. But um, my goal right now is I'm going to play as many tournaments as I can because I'm, I'm close to getting into main draw of Australia and direct entry. So yeah. Um, yeah, for me, I'm just going to, you know, keep grinding, playing tournaments. And uh, my goal, obviously, right now is I want to be back in the top 100. So uh, I'm getting closer. You know, U.S. Open was a really big push for me, a lot of points. And um, and I've also done really well in a lot of other tournaments throughout the year. So um, I'm happy with my progression, and I'm just, you know, trying to get back to the top 100 right yeah, now. Yeah, that's so exciting. And you're, <laughs> yeah. you're getting there. Every, yeah. every time I look, it seems like you're moving up and up. Yeah, so it's a good sign. <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about kind of that grind that you're talking about. You played a lot of tournaments this mm -hmm. year. What's that like on your body? Yeah, no, it's hard, um, especially at this point in the year. Um, a lot of tournaments that you see, you're going to notice there's a lot more retirements, um, injuries, um, you know, the, the entry lists kind of drop a little bit, they get weaker. Um, yeah, it's just hard. Like at this point I say like everybody has something wrong with them, you know, physically after going since January nonstop pretty much. But, um, yeah, yeah it's difficult, but I think also, uh, managing your schedule and I have a lot more, uh, training weeks this time around. Um, I'm not going to kind of go nonstop tournaments like I have done in the past. So I'm going to take more time, do a proper training block and, um, yeah, I think that's where everybody's at nowadays. <laughs> yeah, 100%, especially yeah. this time of year. Yeah, like exactly. Saying. What uh, what do you do throughout the year to maintain your body after grinding out so much? Yeah, I think for me, just the key is just, like I said, schedule, planning. Um, mm -hmm. You have to take rest weeks. You have to take weeks at home. Um, of course, you want to travel and play as many tournaments and get as much points as you can get. But then, you know, you've got to... Um, you know, kind of map it out, you know, and you got to pace yourself because it's a long, long season. And um, like I said, if you keep going harder and harder, at some point your body is just going to like literally be like it's too much. So uh, for me, that's been a big part. Um, a big change that I've made made over the years was cutting back the amount of tournaments I've played and focused more on preparation. And that's kept my body a lot healthier than it has in the past. I love that. How about yeah. uh, the nutrition side of things? What What's your nutrition look like? Yeah, nutrition is important. I'm not going to lie. I could be a lot better with nutrition, but, you know, I'm, I'm like anybody else. I love I love eating sweets. I love snacks. And uh, but that's also another thing I've improved on a lot. Um, you've got to stay healthy. You've got to eat healthy. Um, it helps your energy levels, um, your stamina and matches, your recovery um, before the following matches. So. Uh, those are little things over the years that I've had to I've had to improve on because it just makes such a big difference. And is that difficult uh, when you travel all over the world for the tournaments to maintain that uh, healthy lifestyle? Oh, or? definitely. Yeah. Um, also, being away from home, you know, you don't have like the means to make what you want to make. So and traveling like let's just for example, I was just in, in Asia for almost a month and the language barrier is part of it. And, you know, getting over that and they're just finding something edible to eat at some point so it is it is hard um but like i said it's just one of the challenges that every player has to go through so it's just one of those things yeah definitely and what's <laughs> what, what's it like traveling the world like you said you were just in uh, asia for a month yeah um, all that kind of stuff getting to the do what you love yeah. and go see all these great places how's yeah. that yeah no i'm definitely very lucky i'm very grateful for the life i have um it, it's definitely not an easy thing though you know there's obviously so many weeks where you just want to stay put and you want to like literally just be at home uh, for a week or two. But um, no, like you said, you get to see so many different places, traveling, doing what you love. Um, you know, what you what I work my whole life for, what we all work our entire life for. So um, like I said, very fortunate, but it is nice traveling, meeting new people, uh, trying new foods. And, and it's really nice. How about um, when you're out there? How often do you really get to go explore the cities and places that you're in? Because you have mm. to mix in training and competing right. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I feel in the past um, I didn't 
I didn't really explore the, the places I was traveling just for the fact of, you know, when you're in the routine, you're just used to practicing, going to the hotel, you want to rest. Um, and you know, you have a full schedule of, you know, matches that week, but now I definitely make it a point that wherever I'm going, I take at least one full day to see all the things I want to see. Um, and that's actually helped me a lot, especially, you know, keeping motivation during the tournaments. It's like, it's not just going to your room, going to practice, like getting outside the hotel, being outside, like seeing those things It it helps your mood. It helps your energy. And yeah, I think, I think it's really great. Yeah. It must be so cool. What, uh, what are kind of some of your favorite places that you've gotten to go with tennis? Um, this is, I mean, I've been, honestly, I've been so many places that it's, it's a blur <laughs> mm-hmm. at this point, but, um, I do love Asia a lot. I loved Korea. Uh, the food was amazing. I'm a huge Korean barbecue fan. Like okay. anybody that follows me, they'll be able to know. That's all I post on Instagram. Uh, so that's all I ate there. Um, Italy is also one of my favorites. I've been amazing food. Um, Paris, also one of my favorites. So I, I am a fan of Europe a lot, but I don't know. I do, I do love America. I do, I do love being at home. I do love comfort. So <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. What, uh, you got any Korean barbecue plugs in South Florida that I need yeah, to know about? Yeah, I've, I've got a few. So there's one in Lauder Hill, uh, Gaboose. It's my favorite. Go there all the time. There's Coat in Miami, a little more on the expensive side, but definitely worth it. Um, yeah, so there's a few. <laughs> I gotta go check those ones out. Yeah. Maybe, maybe if you guys go, you'll see Sasha out there too. Yeah, you'll see me. You'll catch me there one of these days. So. <laughs> That's awesome. And then, so obviously, it sounds like you like to eat Korean food. What else mm. do you like to do on your on your downtime? Um, honestly, I'm I'm just a homebody, man. I just like being at home. Uh, you know, I, obviously, I'll hang out with friends. I go shopping. Um, go shopping a lot. But yeah, I think just with the travel and. And everything that goes on, literally, when you get home, you just want to stay home. Mm. So it's like you just want to literally just stay put. Uh, and that's how I am. Yeah, I just I'm really low key. I don't do a ton. I just like to stay home, relax. I think I saw something, too, that said you uh, like to read a lot. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, like love to read. I haven't read in a while, though. It's been like my I've just been so hectic. I haven't been able to read as much as I've wanted to. But that was one of my hobbies over the past years. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. Any particular books that you like or you could recommend uh, for James people out there? James Patterson, a very good author, one of my favorites. Um, Catch Me If You Can, one of my favorite books. Uh, anything James Patterson. Okay, yes. I love that. <laughs> um, let's see, what, what, what else uh, do you think if there's any tips or advice that you could give to young players out there that want to get to where you are right now? Um, I would probably say, um, I want to say pace yourself. It's like, I feel like when you're younger, you have this kind of expectation. It's like, well, I got to do this now and I got to win these tournaments now. Um, but it's just not the case. You know, there's so many top players right now that they didn't even play in juniors and they, they weren't even that good, you know, um, when they were younger and they didn't start improving until they got to the higher level. So I think that is one kind of misconception is that it's okay, you have to be a top junior, a top player. And uh, like I said, I think that's just not the case. So I think just pace yourself, make sure you have a good plan, make sure you have a good training schedule and just a good team around you and like people to guide you. And I think that's most important. So I think a lot of the juniors get caught up in the rankings and those Mm. kind of things. Do you see that uh, with yourself or with other players on the pro tour that they focus on the number and uh, that gets in the way at all? Yeah, I feel... um, Maybe when I was like early 20s, I was like that, you know, always following the ranking, um, always like, okay, I'm going to get this amount of points. But I think it gets to a point where, you know, when you're training hard, you're putting the work in, um, you're doing all the right things, the results are going to come at some point. And, you know, it's kind of just having, you just got to let go and just trust like the work that you put in. Um, And that's been kind of the big thing for me is like, I know when I'm working hard and I'm doing everything the right way, I have the results. Uh, so yeah, I try to stay away now from like looking at the ranking and all that and just focus on my preparation off the court. I think that's great advice. Yeah. And I know we're all excited to see you compete and yeah. like, to close out the year and then <laughs> yeah. everything that you're going to do in 2024 should be pretty exciting too. Yeah, no, I'm excited. I have a feeling it's going to be a very good year. Um, this year was amazing and yeah, I don't know. I just have a feeling it's going to be one of my best years. So We'll see. It'll be big time. And uh, for everybody at home, remember, if you want to use the racket that Sasha uses, Nova November, they're 30% off on the website right now. And you get a free case, uh, can of balls and pack a string with those. Um, so thank you so much, Sasha. Uh, yeah. And I'm sure we'll have you back soon to do a for full, sure. full court size session podcast episode. Get your Nova, best racket. <laughs> Dang. I'm so thankful Sasha was able to take some time from her busy touring schedule to sit with us today at Courtside Sessions. 
Um, this is the last episode in season one. So if you haven't yet, go check out all the previous episodes and be ready for a big season two and courtside sessions coming in early 2024. Um, as always, special thanks to our team here at Diadem Sports for all that they do to make this happen, especially Colin McDowell and all the hours he puts into production of courtside sessions. And again, stay tuned because we have big things coming in season two.